Welcome to the program. Great to have you joining us on AusBiz. We were speaking a little bit earlier about ESG, and it was pointed out that in this crisis, ESG is still front of mind, perhaps not though for the same reasons. You know, it might not be about the environmental impact, but that the social aspect is really key. Is that how you see it? Absolutely. And often during more ordinary times, it's the social aspect that gets short shrift. But we've become very alert as a result of this pandemic to things like the working conditions in factories that might be making our um, protective gear, protective equipment in factories far away. We've become quite alert to many of the working conditions for people who are essential workers in the community and whom we need to be healthy and being able to be willing to um, continue to put themselves at the service of the community in times that are quite difficult. And do you see a real opportunity as well when it comes to ESG principles and gauging companies and corporates compliance when it comes to the shifts in the discussion that's going on right now about supply chains? Because most people say, you know, supply chains are not going to look anything like they did pre-COVID. Yeah, one of the really interesting things about boom times is that we tend to see efficiency as a good in itself. And so very often the idea of just-in-time inventory or very short supply chains where we've taken as many costs as possible out of the um, you know the ultimate cost of a product is seen as a good thing but really efficiency comes at the expense of resilience and a little bit of redundancy is often a good thing because it allows you to make um, changes as you need to to modify um, areas of risk that might be might come offline and that you know that goes for pandemic conditions but it applies equally to a flood or a fire or even a trade embargo that happens in you know different parts of the world and can affect supply chains that we've come to rely on. All of those things are parts of ESG that are typically underappreciated. So we do get headline issues around things like climate change, around things like modern slavery. So there are a lot of ESG issues that the community is aware of, but there's a that's almost the tip of the iceberg. There's a significant amount that's um, less amenable to media interest during good times, um, but very, very apparent when anything goes awry. And of course, that's really the ultimate goal of ESG is to be able to look a little bit further ahead and a little bit wider in your field of view than the things that are typically the focus of business and investment. Um, and being able to you know, widen that view and lengthen that horizon allows you to make in better investment decisions for the long term. That's a really good point. And even ESG as it stands, the E being first, everyone talks about the environment as if that is front and centre. But when it comes to the 12 billion you've seen, where is that being deployed? Which part of that ESG is that trying to move to? Um, it's, it's more about taking everything into account. Um, so one of the interesting things about ESG is that, again, we, we're quite focused um, on being able to label categories of um, within ESG, so the environment or supply chains, but actually a lot of these things interact with each other and understanding how when some of these things interact, it can alter the shapes of economies, alter business um, profits and alter investment returns is some of what ESG takes into account. So to, to give you an example, we might um, more commonly hear in, in, um, cop in the press about things like businesses being a heavy polluter, for instance, a heavy emitter of carbon emissions. What it doesn't take into account is that um, it's not only the carbon emissions that may be affected, but also the physical risk to a company of climate change. So it might be at the very time that the world is becoming more alert to, for instance, carbon emissions and, and a region might become more likely to regulate, to limit carbon emissions, it might be because of a disastrous weather season, bushfires, for instance, that have caused the community to be more alert to that. And those physical risks could be things that are affecting businesses too. So it's really the interaction of many of these kinds of risks that form some of the biggest um, areas of potential risk for ESG and, of course, also the biggest opportunities in addressing them. Yeah, and, and Sushila, just to wrap it up, I mean, are you seeing lots of uh, positive forward momentum on this front here, specifically in Australia? Are there plenty of opportunities, plenty of, of you know, companies that you can sort of hitch your bandwagon to because you truly believe that they're, they're getting it, for lack of a better word? Momentum has been really strong. We've been talking to companies at Regnan since about the early 2000s. 
and the de the degree to which they are understanding and impounding the the ESG ideas into their own business strategies and business models has never been swifter. It's actually quite an exciting time to be working on those projects inside companies and also inside investors. Um, there are always pockets of laggards, and you know that's a reality that investors need to work with. But there's some interesting opportunities out there too.